The Essentials of Scrubbing, Gowning, and Gloving by Dr. Hip Wen. In this module, we will be discussing the technique of surgical scrubbing, gowning, and gloving. This is a very important aspect of surgery since it minimizes the risk of infection from microorganisms present at the time of interventional procedures and surgery. Research has shown that the patient's surgical outcome is influenced by the creation and maintenance of an aseptic environment. Sterile field. Prior to scrubbing, a sterile field must be created so drapes, gowns, gloves, and instruments can be opened in a sterile fashion. As seen here, the nurse, who is not sterile, is opening up a pack and pulling away the edges of the drape so to create a sterile field. Items are open in a sterile manner and drop onto the field, being careful not to contaminate the sterile field. Additional instrument and equipment can then be placed on this field without a risk of contamination. Gowns and gloves will be obtained from the sterile field after scrubbing has been performed. As demonstrated here, aseptics used for prepping the patient should also be placed on a sterile field. This allows members from the surgical team who has scrubbed and become sterile to prep the patient in a sterile manner. As indicated in the illustration, the sterile field should be maintained above the upper abdomen of the person in the sterile gown. The area below this should be considered unsterile, and hands and arms should not be allowed to go below the upper abdomen and into the unsterile area. Similarly, the working area should be placed at a sufficient height to allow the procedure to be done in this sterile field. Surgical scrub. The surgical scrub is a process of removing debris and transient microorganisms from the hands and forearm, reducing the residual microbial count and leaving an antimicrobial residue on the skin that will prevent growth of microorganisms for several hours. If this is the first scrub of the day, a three-minute scrub should be performed. As demonstrated here, the use of an aseptic and water is utilized. A nail cleaner is first utilized to remove dirt and debris from underneath the nail bed. Any members who scrub in surgery should try to maintain short nails in order to prevent accumulation of debris underneath them. Next, an aseptic on a sponge is utilized to clean the fingers, hands, and forearm. First, the aseptic is generally applied to the hand, progressing toward the forearm. Next, a more detailed scrubbing is performed by rubbing the sponge over every digit, especially in between the digits. This will remove the microbial organism, especially in the crevices, and allow sterility to be achieved. In addition, the back of the hand should also be thoroughly scrubbed in order to remove dirt and debris from this area. The scrub should be performed starting from the distal tip of the finger, then moving toward the forearm. The WHO recommends scrubbing each aspect of both hands for a total of at least two minutes and the arms from the wrist to the elbow for one minute each. Alternatively, a counted stroke method can also be used. After completing this process, on one hand, the same procedure is repeated on the opposite hand. After both hands have been scrubbed, the forearm should next be carefully cleaned in a circumferential manner. When washing the aseptic off, it should be done starting from the tips of the finger, then progressing toward the forearm. This prevents the water from the forearm to run back into the hand and contaminating them. Gowning and gloving. The wearing of gowns and gloves by the surgical team minimize the risk of surgical wound infection in patients and protect the team from exposure to contamination from blood and other body fluid. It is generally advisable to wear the mask over the nose and mouth for protection. After completing the scrubbing process, gowning is next performed. As seen here, a towel is first removed from the sterile field in order to dry the hands and forearms. Just as with scrubbing, the fingertips are first dried, then the process is continued up the hands and progress toward the forearm. It should be done carefully to avoid accidental contamination of the sterile field and supplies. Next, the gown is removed from the sterile field and put on. A non-sterile member of the team can secure the gown in place by tying the ties on the back of the gown. 
Finally, gloving is performed. When putting the glove on sterilely, it can be performed with the help of a member from the surgical team who is already gowned and gloved, or can be done by oneself. We will first demonstrate how to put the surgical glove on without requiring any assistance. After placing the gown on sterilely, the hands remain inside the gown, leaving the cuff of the gown covering the hands. The glove is then placed over the gown, and the hand is then brought through the glove without exposing the outside of the glove to the skin of the hand. This process is then repeated on the opposite hand. Once completely gowned and gloved, preparation for surgery can be performed in a sterile manner. A Mayo stand is prepped so that surgical instruments that are more frequently needed are placed nearest to the patient. When the first scrub of the day has already been performed, an abbreviated scrub can be used. Since the initial debridement of the skin has already been performed with the first scrub of the day. In this situation, an aseptic gel is applied to the hand. Again, the gel is first applied to the digits and then gently rubbed onto the hands and forearm. Once the process of scrubbing is complete, galvaning and gowning is then performed as previously demonstrated. We again demonstrate the technique of gloving without assistance. It is important to remember to keep the hands and forearm within the sleeve of the gown until the glove is, can be placed over the cuff. Once accomplished, the hands are then brought through the glove without contacting the outside surface with the hands. We now demonstrate the technique of gloving when there is assistance provided by another member of the surgical team who is already sterilely gowned and gloved. The sterile gown is first removed from the sterile field. In this case, the hands are brought through the cuff of the gown, exposing the hand. The assistant then holds open the glove so that the hand could be placed into the glove without touching the outer surface of the glove. It is important to perform surgical scrubbing, gowning, and gloving since sterility significantly affects surgical outcome. This is a very important technique that must be learned by all members of the surgical team. Please help us improve the content by providing us with some feedback.